welcome to another online lesson. I am Mr. Hoban, and today we're going to be talking about Texas. What was that? Yeah, we're talking about Texas, the only state to be its, a part of another country, its own country, and part of the United States. You don't mess with Texas. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, Texas was always a disputed land. It was disputed between the United States and Spain, and later on, the United States and Mexico. Tensions began in 1803 after the United States purchased the Louisiana Territory and the Louisiana Purchase from France. Now, Americans claimed that Texas was part of this purchase, but Spain protested and said that, no, it is definitely not. And in the adams onis Treaty, the United States agreed to drop its claim to the region. At this time, very few people lived in Texas, only about 3,000, and these people were known as Tejanos, or Mexicans who claimed Texas as their home. Native Americans also had claim to the area, and because the Spanish wanted to promote growth of Texas, they offered vast tracts or plots of land to people who agreed to bring their families and settle there. The people who obtained these grants and recruited the settlers were called empresarios. This process continued in 1821 after Mexico had won its, its independence from Spain. Stephen F. Austin received permission from the new Mexican government to organize the colony of Texas. Austin recruited 300 American families to settle in Texas. Austin's successes made him a leader among these American settlers. From 1823 to 1825, Mexico continued to pass laws offering new settlers land at extremely low prices. In return, the colonists agreed to learn Spanish, become Mexican citizens, and convert to Catholicism, which was the religion of Mexico at that time. Now, this ice cream and cupcake phase where everyone's happy and everyone's living together peacefully did not last very long. By 1830, the Americans in Texas far outnumbered the Mexicans, and they had not adopted the Mexican ways. So this led to increased tensions, as well as the United States offering to buy Texas from Mexico multiple times. And this angered the Mexican government, and in 1830, they sent out this decree or this order that no longer would immigrants from America be allowed to come to the land of Texas. Furthermore, they cut off tr trade routes with all American businessmen. This upset many Texans as they depended on trade with the U.S. and wanted their families to come live there. So again, you see that tension is rising between the United States and Mexico over Texas. Now, in order to smooth things over between Texas and the Mexican government, Stephen F. Austin, the leader of Texas, traveled to Mexico City where he met with the new president of Mexico, Santa Ana. When they met, he had two demands. First, Stephen Austin demanded that immigration from America was lifted and that Texas must be made its own separate state. Santa Ana refused these demands and so Stephen F. Austin sent a letter home to Texas telling them, prepare to fight for independence. The letter, however, was intercepted, and Austin was thrown in jail for sending this letter back home. Santa Ana then overthrew the new Mexican constitution and placed constrict control over Texas. Basically, Santa Ana went from becoming a leader of a somewhat democratic country to an extremely powerful dictator. Now, with these new laws and Stephen Austin being thrown in jail, there began to be disputes among the Texans who were being controlled by Mexico. In December 1835, Texas freed San Antonio from a much larger Mexican force. Stephen Austin was out of jail at this time and began gathering troops for an assault on the Mexican government to achieve independence. Santa Ana marched north, furious at the loss of San Antonio. And when they reached the city, they found a small Texan force barricaded in a nearby mission called the Alamo. Now, at the Alamo, there are only about 180 soldiers on the Texas side against an army of over 2,000 Mexicans led by Santa Ana. The Texans had little gunpowder for their cannons, but they did have some good leaders. The frontiersman Davy Crockett was there, as well as a tough Texan named Jim Bowie. Hit the Bowie knife, if you've ever heard or seen one, that's where it gets its name. The commander, William B. Travis, was only 26, but he was determined to hold his position at the Alamo. For 12 days, through several attacks, the defenders of the Alamo kept Santa Ana's army at bay with rifle fire. On March 6, 1836, Mexican cannon fire smashed the animal's walls. All of the individuals in the fort were killed, but they had bought 
the Texan army enough time to gather troops and supplies and ready themselves for an assault on Santa Ana and his forces. Very similar to what happened in the story of the 300 soldiers of Sparta. On March 2, 1836, Texas declared its independence from Mexico. Sam Houston was named the unofficial commander-in-chief of the Texas forces, and he wanted to prevent any more forts in Texas from being overrun by the Mexican forces of Santa Ana. At the Battle of San Juncinto, near the site of present-day Houston, Santa Ana was camped nearby with an army of more than 1,300. On April 21st, the Texans launched a surprise attack, shouting, Remember the Alamo, in honor of their brave brothers who had died at that battle. They killed more than 600 soldiers and captured about 700 more, including Santa Ana. And on May 14, 1836, Santa Ana signed the treaty that recognized the independence of Texas. So after their independence, 7, September 1836, Texas elected Sam Houston as their president. He appealed to Washington, D.C., asking the United States to annex or take control of Texas, add them to the United States. Andrew Jackson, who was the president of the U.S. at that time, refused the request. An addition of another slave state would upset the balance of slave and free states in Congress. So for the moment, Texas would remain its own independent country. So after they gained independence, Texas still faced quite a few problems. First off, they were in a huge debt because of the war. Second, because Mexico still wanted to get the lands in Texas back. So they pleaded with the United States to annex them. Southerners favored the Texas annexation, but Northerners opposed admitting another slave state to the Union. At this time, Martin Van Buren, who was the president, did not want to inflame the slavery issue or risk war with Mexico, and he put off annexing Texas. The situation changed with the 1844 presidential campaign. Manifest destiny, the belief that God wills the United States to move from sea to shining sea, was a popular idea at this time. The South wanted Texas, and the North favored gaining all of the Oregon Territory. Candidate James K. Polk supported both actions, and after he won, Congress passed a resolution to annex Texas, and in 1845, Texas joined the Union. Oregon also became part of the Union, which kept that balance between slave and free states in the nation. That about wraps things up for today. Next time, we'll be looking at the United States' war with Mexico, and we'll see you then.